Good morning. It's so good to see all of you here this morning. I think all of you are here, right? I, I certainly hope so. It is a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Willoughby, Nathan, for inviting me, along with um, Dr. Reams and his wonderful wife, Greta. It's so good. Mitch, thanks for the music. How can any of you leave this auditorium on a Tuesday or Thursday, whichever you meet regularly, without being blessed by such music? What a joy. This morning, I am going to open uh, with a scripture from 1 Peter. It pretty much says who I am, what I believe, and I would like to share that with you. 1 Peter third through the fifth verses. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready, ready to be revealed in its time. From 1 Peter 3, 5, 13. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone, to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Be ready be ready. Peter was one who always had encounters with Jesus, right? When was your last encounter with Jesus? Where did you find Jesus in the encounter? I met a wonderful person this morning for the first time, opened the door for me, and Brother Ramon, where are you? Are you here? Maybe he's... All right. An encounter with a joy. Today I want to talk about encounters with Jesus. Resurrection hope after death. Jesus' is death. 62 years ago, I was sitting in a cafeteria in Indianapolis, Indiana, waiting to do a final exam in the School of Social Work. I was 22 years old. I sat eating my soup, and a neatly ge ge uh, dressed gentleman looked my way, brought his coffee over, and said, may I sit at your table? I said, of course, of course, please sit down. I'm 22. It's in the middle of the city. Who do you meet in the middle of the city? He said, what makes your countenance so peaceful? I said, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I'm a violinist with the Indianapolis Symphony. My home is in Russia, and I travel all over the world, and I've not seen peace like this since I traveled in Spain when I met a priest. What makes you so peaceful? Samuel had just been diagnosed with cancer, I said. I'd like for you to meet him. He said, well, how could I do that? I said, well, the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra is coming to AU campus, my university. They were going to play in O.C. Lewis Gymnasium a month later. So in early November, the symphony arrived, and I said, I wonder if I will meet him. And sure enough, Samuel and I were on the front row, and at intermission, my violinist came and met us. We had a wonderful conversation. Fast forward a year. It was once again time for the Indianapolis Symphony to arrive here. 
Samuel had died in Holy Week, Tuesday of Holy Week, 1963. We had a heads up service over here at Park Place Church because we knew there was a faith in Jesus Christ that lived beyond his death. God encounters. At intermission that next month, there was the violinist. He came to me and he said, uh, Samuel is dead, but you're not wearing black. I said, no, I'm well, I'm well. And Samuel, he's free, he's free. You see, Samuel and I had prayed, God, you can heal in an instant. You can heal through medical mechanisms, but your ultimate healing is through death. A heads up service, yes, the hallelujah chorus. He was buried on Good Friday, but then Easter came. What is Easter brought to you this week following Easter? What encounters are you making? I hope that as I do a few encounter stories from my own life, it will connect with some of your own encounters. You remember Peter? You've read Peter, you've studied Peter. You know Peter was quite a guy, wasn't he? I mean, he was in his 20s. He had uh, some interesting conversations with people, and uh, a few we remember very well. But Peter always talked about his encounters, but particularly after Easter. Jesus had a few more things to do before he ascended so he had to talk with Peter and the guys, some of the women. Oh yes, all oh, those women. They're always present, aren't they? The women gathered around. <clears throat> One encounter in my own life that you may connect to, several of you I know have been over to the Kurdatsky Wellness Center. That is named after a wonderful family, but I'm talking about now the brother, to the one who was named, the gym was named after. Dr. Carl Kurdatsky was an educator here for many, many years, his wife, Tip. They had four wonderful children. I was happy to share a lot of joy with the Kardatsky family. The third child, Phyllis, was a classmate of mine. We entered AU together. Phyllis was an educator, she was a nurse, she was a committed Christian. But in her last days, she had cancer and was home. Pastor David Markle at Park Place Church at the occasion of Phyllis's memorial service reiterated to us what Harold, her husband, had said. She was in the living room in a hospital bed, as I recall, and he heard some stirring and as he looked in to see Phyllis, she raised her hands and she said, I see Jesus. The whole congregation became quiet. How many of us really believe that it was what she saw? Or was it just a brain thing from the medication? Encounters, encounters, encounters after the resurrection of Jesus, Easter hope. Serving in East Africa, I drove a little red Toyota. I was moving up the road from Nairobi to Kericho to Eldoret. And in my company were my parents and a friend, missionary friend of mine. 
It was uh, about five in the evening as we were driving up the escarpment, and all of a sudden I heard this bang, 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 crunch, and the car stopped. What, what on earth? It's 5.30, you know, the sun goes down immediately at seven o'clock on the equator. We all got out of the car. It was loaded because we were going to a Quaker mission to share the weekend with a wonderful friend. My father, a pastor, my mother, a pastor. All right, Nita, what do you think we're going to do? Not too much traffic could come by those roads. We're going to lay hands on this car, and it's going to be healed. And my father looked at me, and I said, well, haven't we always believed in healing in the Church of God? It doesn't just mean physical healing, does it? Maybe there are finances that need to be healed. Well, we got out, we laid hands on that little red Toyota, and we waited. And I prayed, Lord, I trust you. Far in the distance, I saw, I saw a Volvo. I saw a Volvo coming. It was coming up the road, churning, just beautiful. I waved, got out there and waved my arms, and sure enough, Olaf, stopped. Olaf, a missionary friend from the Scandinavian mission, he was taking an African sister to her destination and he pulled over and he had said to her, this is part of my tribe, I need to stop. And what happened? Olaf pulled down a rope out of his car, a yellow rope. Hope in a yellow rope, Jesus answered prayer. Olaf tied my Toyota to the bumper of his car. My parents got in his car and my missionary friend and I steered the car all the way to Eldoret. Resurrection hope. Maybe it's funny to you, but I believed it. Over the last three years, <clears throat> I've had the experience of dealing with too many deaths. Too many deaths in my own family, too many deaths in my community, too many deaths of my family, too many deaths with a humanity around the world. And perhaps you have too. And perhaps it's shut us down a little bit from resurrection hope. from spring of 2020 until September of 2022, I moved to a little efficiency apartment in Hoopston, Illinois. Now, Hoopston, Illinois is just nine miles over the Indiana border, and it has no more than 5,500 people in the town. But my, pa my father had been pastor there, and I had two sisters who were living there. They've given their lives in ministry as pastoral people in, in education. But one of them had pancreatic cancer, the other one end-stage diabetic situations. And me, I'm the oldest of the four. There are four girls, but the other girl lives in Indianapolis and she's had a stroke. And you know what firstborns do. I'm sure you know what firstborns do. They're responsible to take care of everything, right? So here goes Anita, two years, taking care, doing everything I can, questioning, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? I didn't have the money to have another apartment. I didn't have the money to go between Indianapolis and Hoopston. What do I do? Resurrection Hope, where are you? Resurrection Hope after Egypt, de the death of Jesus. Resurrection hope came, it came in the encounters with my grandmothers that I've been meeting with for 28 years. They sent money. They sent money when it bowled me over. I didn't know that they knew that I needed it. They gave me gasoline money when I needed it. The community and the church, friends sent 
Facebook messages, just when I needed it in the evenings when I was so tired. Resurrection hope after Easter. The word to Nita, firstborn, always in charge, take care of everything. I couldn't take care of everything. The words that came to Nita, wait. Wait. But, but Lord, you know it's so hard for me to wait. But wait. My sisters were surrounded by a wonderful community, community of friends who cared. They came. They came to our house. They came to their apartment. And the head nurse was a young lady that my sister Karen had in her youth group. She was the one. She was God's angel to us at that point. Wait, Nita. Wait. Karen and Sadie died within six weeks of each other. Wait, Nita. They died in resurrection hope. Hope they had lived out in a community that loved them. Hope. It's past Easter. It's Easter week. Where has your encounter been? Has your encounter been walking along the Emmaus Road? Where is your encounter? Friends, in light of all we've read this semester in scripture and you've had wonderful preachings about this resurrected life, you and your own experiences have had encounters. Do we know, do we talk about, do we share about this unshakable kingdom after Easter? Do we all know the abundantly given hope that follows Easter? Will you stand with me? Receive the benediction from Jude. Now to God, who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of glory with rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, and now and forever. Amen. Go in peace and all hope of the resurrected Christ. <laughs>